Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the NVIDIA RTX 4080. And unfortunately, how it's priced makes it very unattractive. Just wanna to add to what all our favorite tech tubers have done in providing us this data and performance and gaming benchmarks. Just wanna to add to it and you know, give you a little bit of my opinions and just go over a few things. So just bear with me. And for the gamers that watch this video, if I get to the end of this section and you hear the words mining, please don't just close off your mind. Hear me out because I'm more or less referring to at home individual that just spent thousands of dollars on their GPU and may want to try to at least recoup some of their investment. And we know what the current market conditions is not going to be much at all. But anyways, getting into it, like I said, many of our tech tubers have provided us the benchmarks and data and it's not looking too good from a price to performance standpoint. Now, while we do get anywhere from 20 to 30% performance uplift, depending on the workload, the price is what makes it super unattractive. And it's basically, you know, what we expected, right? When, when the, before the 4090 or the 90, uh, you know, segment, there was a Titan cards. The Titan cards will always be the top of the line for that generation. And then you had, you know, your, your top of the, uh, the line or top of the mid tier, 4080, 47, so on and so forth. But the 4080 specs we all know about, it's got 37, or excuse me, 97, 28 CUDA cores, 76 ray tracing cores, 304 tensor cores. The base and boost clock is relatively the same as the 4090. It does have obviously less memory than the 4090, going from 24 gigabytes of GDR6X to 16. Same memory speed, 21 gigabit per second, and the memory bus is cut down to 256 bit with a TDP of 320. So the, the, me the memory cut down the uh, bus width cut down, obviously the tensor cores, CUDA cores, and ray tracing cores being cut down, and the power limit being locked, obviously is going to hamper this card's full-on performance. And what's interesting to me is the price that they originally launched at, as far as MSRP, if that's a real thing, uh, was really easily gobbled up by some of the scalpers trying to take advantage of the situation of a low supply, high demand, uh, because we got the Founders Edition and a couple other models around $1,200 mark. But if you go and try to find those now, they're going to be $1,300, $1,400, $1,500. But if you're going to be looking at these prices already, and even though they say buy now here, they're not available. If you click on buy now and then click the website link, whether it's Best Buy or Newegg, they're not available. However, I did notice that Newegg just came out with some new stock just recently while recording this video. So bear with me here. But if you're looking at these prices, you might as well try your luck, save the extra, you know, spend an extra $200, $300, depending, and try to get a 4090. But NVIDIA is doing this on purpose because they want to get rid of their 3000 series stock. And there's plenty of it to go around. They over speculated, I guess you could say. They, they over speculated, betting that the mining craze was going to continue and they're going to have all of these GPUs that they'll be able to continue to sell and get that market share. It didn't pan out that way. The market crashed, and obviously a lot of people that had a, a lot of GPUs, the 3000 series, 20 series, whatever it may be, they are selling it on secondhand market, and they're actually getting better and better in price. Now, even the 3060 and 3060 Ti are pretty good price, but I would like to see the 3070 Ti come down even further. And we may get that as we move towards the holiday season. But if you go on Amazon, if you go on Walmart, what you'll see is the same trend we've been seeing um, with these secondhand resellers. They buy these cards, you know, $1,200, $1,300, and they're trying to sell. Look at this. This 49 is going for $25.36. Absolutely ridiculous. Got one star because I'm pretty sure there's a smart user out there saying, don't buy this. This is a scam. Uh, now, Newegg just restocked because I refreshed just before I started recording this video, and they do have an asus tough for fourteen hundred dollars still a little bit much than what i would pay and they do have a gigabyte oris uh, water cooled version uh for around you know fifteen hundred dollars so not too bad but still i would take my money if this was my money that i would have to spend and i would just spend an extra hundred two hundred three hundred depending on whatever model uh but i would just rather get a 4090 i would not spend two grand on an asus 4080 that's absolutely ridiculous. And the Asus Tough brand is a pretty good card uh, as far as, you know, performance uh, goes. And the price isn't too crazy. You know, $1,400 is above its uh, original MSRP of $1,200, but it's not too bad. 
And so from a gaming perspective, this card is not very attractive performance per watt. And then when you look at the mining side of things, it's not attractive at all. So who is this card for? Well, it's not for anybody specifically. NVIDIA is just trying to release a next generation card that does have a performance increase, but the pricing is just not adequate in my opinion. Uh, with a 4080, uh, with just some of the data that we have, because we're still getting more and more data as the days go on, you're looking about 15 to 30 cents a day in profit, depending upon your electricity, unless you're living in a dorm or don't have to pay electricity. Uh, but right now, this is based on 10 cent per kilowatt hour. And that's Caspa or Alpheum and even ETHash isn't too much of a price or performance increase. What I mean by that is, say the 3080 was averaging around 90 to, at the most I could get, was maybe 102, 103 mega hash. Well, the 4080 isn't much better than that. And even the 4090 was getting on ETH hash or ETC hash around 130, 132 mega hash. So the 4080, if you're buying this card for mining is a stupid idea because you could just get a 30 series card, spend less money, and possibly, depending on if you play your cards right, get two 3080s for the price of one 4080 if you're looking at it, you know, because it's gonna be costing you around two grand just to buy that card. Um, and, and the performance, is there from a gaming perspective. It's very attractive. The 4090 is very attractive to me. I had a 4090, but because I don't play uh, games as much as I used to, right? Because I do like to participate in Battlefield, Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft. Because I don't do it as much, I felt it needed to go to a better home. I got my data, I got my information out to the community, and I wanted to get it to a good home, and it is being put to good use. We can see here on Caspa through uh, another uh, uh, community member that the 4090 was getting around 1350 mega hash at 270 watts and the 4080 is actually pretty decent at 1450 mega hash at 203. The 40 series seem very efficient when it comes to uh, like K heavy hash, kryptonite, stuff like that. But when it comes to ETH hash, ETC hash, not so much. All you're going to be doing is wasting your money. If you're buying this card for mining, you're wasting performance. Uh, but if you're a gamer, you gonna you're gonna see again a decent bump of performance, but I wouldn't go spending fifteen hundred dollars when you can go and get a forty ninety or possibly get a forty ninety if you're patient and wait. Uh, plus, with the AMD seven thousand series coming in the future, what I'm hoping for is that their price to performance will kind of push Nvidia to drop the price down a little bit on the forty eighty, thus making a little bit more of a, a a better deal for the end user because the end user might be gaming on their you know their main uh computer but then when they're not using it maybe mining a little bit making 30 cents 40 cents a day just to help recoup some of that investment right it's not much compared to earlier days but at least they're doing something to recoup some of that investment it's just not worth 1300 dollars. it's not worth 1400 1500 1600 dollars, especially not two thousand dollars when you could just get a 4090 and even that is a little bit steep in price. But either way, NVIDIA is trying to get rid of their 3000 stock. So they're doing this with their 40 series. They probably have uh, plenty of 40 series stock available. They're just releasing it little by little or in small batches. So we'll see how things pan out. This chart shows the official launch price of every NVIDIA 80 class card for the last 12 years. When the RTX 3080 came out in 2020, GPU prices had increased by 40% over a 10 year span since the GTX 580. That's pretty reasonable. With the RTX 4080, GPU prices have increased by 70% over the RTX 3080 in just two years. 40% in 10 years versus 70% in two years. At least Nvidia's greed and how much they're f***ing us over can be measured objectively. If you're not screaming into the void yet, you should be, because this is just gonna continue and there's no end in sight because consumers keep buying GPUs for insane prices. They're using their wallets to essentially tell Nvidia, I love you, daddy. You're the best daddy in the world. The bright side is that last gen GPUs are still plenty fast for most users and they've come way down in price, so you can still afford an outstanding gaming experience. Without Either way, I'm excited for December for AMD 7000 series. We'll have to wait and see how the performance uh, pans out from day one coverage. But let me know your thoughts down below about the 4080, the 4090. But that's going to do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well. Check out links in the description. They'll support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.